Hello and welcome to another episode of Redacted. Today is Wednesday, April 13th, 2016. Twerk, how are you? Pretty good. What's going on, guys? Word What's up? up. I'm sunburnt. Yep. I it's just that, got home. That, is that Florida, like, Florida what, orange minutes, glow? Yeah, 15 five. minutes ago, probably. Yeah, yeah. it was a tight one. It's yeah. almost me. It's almost yep. just me. It doing was my almost thing. just yours. <laughs> um... Which here, I'm gonna I'll show you what I was talking about. By the way, look at this. I was ready to go. It was ready. <laughs> but um, yeah. So what have you? Well, first off, what were you doing today? Um, it was it was a, a little bit of yesterday. Well, a lot of bit of yesterday and a little bit of today. Um, was one of my friends was buying a car, and my car is getting pretty old. It's got about 150 thousand miles on it now, and I you know. I could see some issues coming up, so I'm kind of ready to turn it in and and maybe get a new one. So I was uh, I went with her and a couple other friends yesterday mm -hmm. to this place down in Miami, and uh, it was an all day experience. But I found some cars that I think I could I might be able to afford that I like, and uh, yeah. So um, she went back today because her the car that she was going to buy wasn't ready. So I dropped her off because uh, she got into an accident and didn't have a car. So Okay. Oh. So I dropped her off and uh, hung out there for a little bit and then ended up sitting in traffic for, fuck, almost two hours. So, Gotta love yeah, that traffic. Miami, man. Jesus yeah. Christ, the worst. So I know when I go car shopping, it's not going to be down there. It'll be up yeah. uh, more where I live. But yeah, so I was looking like I think uh, Honda Accords. I've I've always bought. I've always had Hondas. I've never had anything other than Honda. So mm -hmm. I'll probably stick with that. And uh, what have you been up to this past week other than car shopping? Uh, I, I was so sick all week. I missed. Um, I missed Thursday stream. I missed Friday stream. I missed work Thursday. I missed work Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I I've never been this sick before. Basically, uh, last week's redacted. I had the sniffles a little bit. Like yeah. I don't know if you guys can see, but I was like turning off my mic and <laughs> and yeah. like sniffling the whole time. And that I didn't think was much. As soon as the podcast ended, I went to CVS and I got some Mucinex and I was like, I think I'll be all right. And um, the lady there was like, "Ooh, you better be careful. A couple people were hospitalized with what, what you look like you have uh, with pneumonia and stuff. And I was like, yeah, whatever. You're dumb. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Twerk confirmed so I, first wave apocalypse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I like take the medicine and I wake up the next morning and I've never had these body aches before and uh, like just full on head congestion. And yeah, it was pretty brutal. So um, it, it ended up just being like, a, I guess, like a, I don't know, like a head infection, I guess, or whatever you mm -hmm. call it. And I got a Z pack. And so I had that, uh, my first dose yesterday, my second dose, or two days ago, second dose today. At the end of the podcast, I'll take my third. What I didn't know is, is that is a pretty high level, um, what is it? It's like, um, I don't know what it is, but it's a high level, <laughs> level medicine. Yeah. And uh, basically it makes your skin more susceptible to getting sunburned. And oh, okay. I was, we were outside for not long at all and I got burn like hell everyone's like how are you burnt and we're not and i'm like yeah. I, I don't know i don't know what's going on but i got really burnt so that so sucks happens. your skin well. your skin starts to melt and then you yeah. become a zombie and the yep. apocalypse starts and then, and then the apocalypse starts while you are I, in miami you start eating like homeless dudes faces and i'm i'm uh, patient zero yeah doing that uh flaca or whatever <laughs> that they do yeah here. yeah people people go crazy people have been running so, around and i mean yeah and i played elite dangerous a little bit uh this week too so yep. That was uh, I played that on Monday. It How are you took, liking it? I I don't even want to comment on it yet, and that's kind mm -hmm. of what I said the whole time. Is people like, what do you think about it? And I'm like, ah, because I hate it right now because yeah. I'm spending the whole time kind of learning, uh, as I'm going. Yeah. I don't quite understand what's going on, so I'm spending time like like you could probably see me like looking at the chat. Asking for questions, right, right. Uh, asking questions, and trying to learn how how it works. So, um, I'm not going to comment on it yet until I give it at least like five streams or something like that. Right. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna give it its full chance. I've never given it a chance. I'm gonna give it a chance, and um, 
yeah, and I, I can see that it has potential to be fun. Like the landing on planets looks really cool and everything. So I think it'll be a good game to kind of pass the time. Uh, yeah, I think I know when I popped in, you were in some rover shooting a turret and it wasn't shooting back or something. Yeah, know, yeah, something it was like weird. Yeah. I guess it was far enough away. I yeah. I don't know. I'm try I'm learning how everything is, and uh, I basically failed like every mission I tried to do, and it was it was a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> so when it's not such a hot mess, I'm I'm hoping that it'll be uh, a little more interesting. And I know that there's some lore, and you can take part in kind of like what's going on in the universe and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to try and do a bit of that. Right on. Right on, right on. Anything else? Uh, I just have the, the the last the other thing is just the gray edge shirt is still up oh, there. Oh right. So, yeah, make sure um, if you guys haven't picked one up, please do. I'm not sure how many days it has uh, left because I've been ahi, so ahi, sick. Right? Is the yeah ahi dash ahi um key spring. And let me pull that up for you so everybody okay. can ahi ahi can the tea spring can campaign. see it in it's all like, its ridiculousness. Mm, so it, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's an intense shirt. It's meant to be a parody shirt, kind of funny. Uh, and oh, I'm on. It took me. Look at this. It took me to this T spy thing to see your metrics. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. It does. It's all locked out. That's funny. Oh, though. weird. But well, whatever. Let me let me uh, pull it up here for you, though. Um. Uh... Oh, what is that? What is T spy? Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. I know people spying on my T-shirts. What's up with that? Only if but yeah, I mean that—that's what's going on. Um, it's got a few, few, maybe like a about a week, a week or so left, maybe uh, two weeks mm -hmm. at the at the most. And yeah, make sure you guys check it out. I think I put it live last Thursday, so it's probably got about two weeks left. So if you haven't picked one up, please do. I would really appreciate it. it comes I think in all kinds of cool colors. It and does. Women's and a hoodie. Yep. Yeah, I've tried to put all the options there for you guys. I haven't picked mine up yet. I'm definitely going to pick up uh, at least a tea and a hoodie, so I'm looking forward to that. I mean, anytime anybody wants to laugh in my channel, they tend to use yeah. uh, tend to use that that emote. So that's that's what it represents, you know. Mm -hmm. Is that a Mexican? I don't know. He might be Mexican. I'm not really sure what country he's from. Yeah, I don't know. Uh. Spanish somewhere he's he's I think I don't know and he tells funny stories and laughs a lot about yeah. uh Star Citizen devs so. yeah it's pretty it's, amazing yeah so yeah go check that out it's twenty two dollars twenty two ninety nine twenty two ninety nine US yeah I see yeah. the Canadian price so it's different here for me um yeah so no cool I'm glad you're you're trying out Elite and doing that because I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah and if, if you know it, it's nice to know someone who is is going to be level-headed on both um, obviously it's... i've read a fair amount and there's been some topics about it recently that i've been reading and i do go and check out their subreddit and whatever and there's been uh some not so positive things uh from their end of uh the spectrum but um you i know, just think it's wanting... important to to as a star citizen streamer maybe to know because the people compare them all the time mm -hmm. and when they compare them and i haven't played it i i feel like it's hard to be part of the conversation so i was like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna right go i'm gonna give it a chance i'm gonna try and learn everything i can about it while still playing a lot of star citizen and then hopefully be able to take part in the conversation and and say these are the positive things that elite does these are the good things that star citizen does and hopefully they can both coexist because for whatever reason like there's hardcore people on both sides. And, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, the other thing, too, is are, is are you going to be looking at other space games then as well? Like things like Absolutely. Eve and... Absolutely. I have a bunch that I, I want to play. Yeah. And like um, Sunday of Doom, one of your mods, me and him talk about Stellaris all the time. That's coming out in three yeah, weeks. Yeah, I know. You keep telling me. Cannot that. wait. <laughs> Cannot wait. I'm, I, I love Star Citizen, but I might take a good at least a week off straight and just play Stellaris. Because that game is that game's gonna be fun, I think. Right on. Um, for myself, uh, first things first, I want to say a huge congratulations to my buddy Rockzilla. Yes, congrats, um, Rock. So I don't know. I know he's in the channel earlier. I don't know if he's in here now, but he actually 
uh, was one of the pillars that helped me start streaming. So uh, I didn't really, because I, I spent all my money on the computer and getting everything all ready for streaming, I didn't really have enough money left over to buy new games. Um, I remember I had your some birthday games. stream. Yeah. The first, the first year that you were streaming your birthday stream, it was like him, uh, Rookie. Yeah, and Danielle. Some girl, English girl, yeah. Danielle. Yeah, I, can't, yeah. I couldn't remember her name. Danny. And uh, yeah, no, that was a great, that was a good party, man. That was yeah, fun. no, that was good for sure. And uh, yeah, so anyways, he helped me out quite a bit um, when I first started streaming. And I ended up buying him, he got me like Arcage and stuff like that. I ended up buying nice. him uh, a Cutlass Black Package yep. and my brother and, and a bunch of other people. So That day, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it was that, that day. It was, it was that day. It was my birthday stream. Yep. That I, I picked up a package for both of them. Poor um, guys. They ended up with cutlasses. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was back when I thought they were going to be... Uh, they could still be yeah. cool. They could still be cool. Um, but yeah, so did that last night. I went out for Alexa's birthday, part two. And uh, had some drinks and, and whatever. Got her drunk, which was fun. She uh, messaged me this morning, so she's alive. Which is She's good. alive. That's good. She's alive and and moving around, which is good. <laughs> um, so did that. Uh, been planning for this weekend, which uh, Friday I'm not going to be streaming during the day. Okay. But I will. We will. Well, we might be streaming during the day. It depends if we can. We're doing our first iteration of Field Trip Friday. So there's going to be a bunch. Friday. Yeah, a bunch of us straight partnered streamers are going to just go hang out and go do random cool shit. Because we're nice. cool people and we do cool shit. So we're going to yeah. go to like the aquarium and we're going to all do an escape room and we're going to go to like the suspension bridge and go out for drinks and just and hang how, out. And... How are you going to be streaming it? Yeah, we're going to we're going to stream it uh, via on Periscope. Periscope, yeah. Okay. And then I'm we're going to see if we can start to capture it here before I leave. Um, but we're going to have to play around with it before that happens. Yeah. Uh, fake uniform is, is coming down cause he's just outside of Vancouver. So he's showing up tomorrow. Nice. Um, so I've been prepping for that. He's here for the weekend. Cool. So he'll be down and, and we'll be doing some dual stream stuff. Obviously I've been playing a lot of division. Yeah. The new patch for division came out 1.1, 1. 1, uh, with incursions so and it? trading and stuff. I've been really enjoying it. Um, Good. when you have a group of people, it's, it's really fun. And it's it's sort of a nice change. It's a lot different from Star Citizen. Yeah. I mean, um, it's... But it's still a game that's that feels very polished and and uh, I mean it's, it's fun to play in a group. Um, I've leveled up actually quite quickly, so I'm already uh, like level thirty and then level forty Dark Zone. So oh, sick. yeah, I'm I'm in the highest tier for the Dark Zone already. With the, they implemented this new gear score thing and stuff. Um, does that does that mean okay? So you're already the highest everything. Does it? Because it, I I've still I've just gotten to level four. I finished the tutorial and that was it. Yeah. I haven't played since. I do plan on playing some more, but I later on um, maybe this month. But uh, now that you're that high, is are you running out of things to do? Or no, is there, no, not at all. So there's still lots to do. There's high. daily. The thing is, there's, and I'm hoping Star Citizen sort of does stuff like this. Like, I don't, I don't know if you had this in, you play Ultima, right? That was your game. Yeah. So in WoW, um, there were a thing called dailies and weeklies. So They don't have that stuff, but there was always something to do. There, yeah, okay. So in Division, they also have dailies and weeklies. So it's like little challenges or things that you can do um in the game that'll reward you extra for doing uh daily or weekly now a, a daily in star citizen could be something like oh you know go go get fuel for this or go help these people get to here or whatever just like the mm -hmm. little daily missions or whatever that give you maybe an extra incentive than your normal missions would okay um, so just little things like if you can if you can only play for a couple hours then you should probably do your dailies kind of thing gotcha. um and unlock like new weapons and stuff like that. So it, they also increase the drop rate of the highest end loot, which are these yellow things, which we just saw on the screen there. So yellow's legendary, right? Le yellow's legendary. So I have a full legendary set. Sick already. Um, and then there's also What's your they DPS, in, bro. I always hear every my, time I was watching my DPS is 100, 170 or 180k. 
Oh man, my DPS is 178k. Yeah. 178k. Yeah, yeah it was like my health, were always my, measuring their dicks based on their their. Yeah, uh, but I am DPS a glass when cannon. When it first came out, I'm a glass cannon. My health is like 30k. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then there's another thing for skills, and that's like 10k. So I've I've put so you're in, all I'm, into the gun. Yeah, I'm all glass cannon. And you can see there that was all my golds and whatever. It's been pretty fun. Um, I've been playing with a solid group, and now when once you're at a high level, you can basically get in any other level thirties to jump in with you. Like you don't need a specific group to do anything. You just need to make sure everybody's sort of in the same bracket. Yeah. Um. So being as we're in the highest end bracket now, I can pretty much bring in whoever. So if someone can't make it, like last night. Um, Nikon Gamer couldn't make it, so we had Ace Bravo in there instead. Uh, so yeah, pretty awesome, pretty fun. Um, I've been enjoying it, I've been doing that all, uh, at nighttime. Um, I think it's good, I think it's a good, like, for everybody out there, right? Um, we love Star Citizen, this is a Star Citizen podcast, obviously. We love this game, but it's it's good to, to mix it up a little bit. And mm -hmm. because... You know, the game's still in development, so there's going to be times where, where, where I really feel like we are right now, where we're kind of in the 2.4 waiting game, and, and it's good to mix it up a little bit and play something different and, and see other things. There's other games out there, too. Yeah, you know, most that, definitely. And that are, that are real fun. Like Proxus just put in the chat, if anybody has any questions, exclamation point question in chat, uh, yep. we'll answer those at the end. Uh, Twerk didn't think we were going to have a very long podcast or much to talk about, but I, I think I'm going to disagree a little bit. I think we have quite yeah, a bit to talk about. Some, <laughs> yeah, some so uh, I guess we'll start into that, and we're going to jump in. Actually, I want to, I'm, I'm going to bring this up at the beginning and at the end of the podcast, and, and that is um, there is a free fly week, and yes. it's starting on Friday. Okay, yeah. so if you don't have Star Citizen, exclamation point referral in chat, make an account, and on Friday you'll be able to download the game and play it for free. Or we don't know how long yet, but it'll be at least a week. It'll be at least a week, and we don't we currently don't know what ships they're going to be offering unless they've mentioned it in the last little bit. Yeah, you know? so the last one that they did, the Free Fly opened up all ships for everybody. Right, so which if, was awesome. Which is this is a good time to test out those ships that you, maybe you haven't, uh, you didn't want to rent, or maybe you don't have enough time to get get some wreck to rent, or you don't want to purchase or whatever, uh, or or back the game and then get a a reward of. But yeah, so um, free fly week starting on Friday, pretty cool. And I'll bring that up again at the end of the podcast for anybody who jumps in afterwards. Um, but the big news of the week, uh, and I know I had an epic rant, is the best way to put it, on my channel when I heard about this, um, is the Evil Cuddy. Yeah. Evil Cuddy! I, do, do, I do, just do, felt do, like I said that. Hold on, to put your uh, D-Luminati's in chat. Oh, yeah. The first day it came out, I, I played the, the X-Files music and everything. There we go. Um, but yeah, so so so, what's your opinion on it? Because I, I have you and I have I, share I have the X Files themes playing in the background. So, <laughs> um, yeah, what is? Well, let's go. Listen, let's go over what it actually is first. Let, let's I don't do that, think we and then necessarily know exactly what it is right now. Let, well, let's talk about what we think it is first, okay. and then we'll go into our opinions on why we think it's a good or a bad thing or or whatever. Okay. And we'll play well, devil's advocate and stuff. So first off, what is Evocati from our understanding? Uh, I, how I understand it is, it's approximately 500 people, mm -hmm. um, 150 of which were, or maybe 600 people. I don't know, but 150 of which were chosen based off their uh, contributions to the issue council. So the guys who contributed the most had the most. To offer to the issue mm -hmm. council, which is very important for, for the, especially the QA guys and and trying to fix these bugs and stuff like that, right? Yep. The other um, bit that was left, so I guess the other three fifty or four fifty, depending on how many are actually in, uh, were based on how much time they spent playing the PTU, the PTU builds in the last X amount of months. I don't know how right. many, and we have about five or six hundred people that got in emails and got invited. Um, now, what it is, how I understand, is um, when they're ready to drop 
some content uh, uh, for a given patch, uh, PTU patch, something like that. Uh, these people will be given a special build called. Oh, what is it? What do you think? Well, do you think there'll be a special launcher for it? I that's that's something that I I don't know. I think mm -hmm. at the moment it'll probably because they can't make a new launcher, so they'll probably just have um, another thing beside the PTU? another thing beside it. So it'll go or live it PTU, or yeah, e EV or whatever. So they're. So it's called like Evocati test flight. So there'll be an Evocati test flight before a PTU goes live. Just if if you guys have ever experienced the first PTU drop, the first build of any PTU, it's terrible. Yeah. It's super unstable. It's it's horrible to deal with, and I think this kind of takes that out of the equation because these 500 people will test it and be like, "Yo, this shit is brutal. Yeah. You need to fix this, this and this." Before you put it to PTU, and they're like, "All right, cool." And they this is sort of covering the next question: is is why is it needed, right? So, and, it, and, and I think that's why it's needed. Personally, yeah, I, I don't think like I think some people are like, "Ooh, special snowflakes! They get to play content before we do." But it's like a day or two before you do, and it's to make sure when you do that you don't go fuck this. My frame rate's five per second, and I'm not playing. Yeah, because um, that's what's been happening now. Especially in two point three. The the big thing for me is that there's an NDA on it. Um, yeah, and that to me doesn't make necessarily a lot of sense. And the reason that is is okay, people are gonna get it in a day or two, anyways. So what it, I I'm just wondering what the what the thing, and this is sort of what I went off on my when when I was on my channel the other day about is, you know, they they say that they're gonna be releasing things and we're gonna see the development as it's happening. And doing all of this other stuff, but they are are co consistently holding stuff back on purpose and and waiting, right? So uh, a good example of this is if somebody asks on reverse the verse, oh, what are the next ships that are available? Oh, we know what they are, but you won't know till next Thursday, right? What it, I don't understand what the harm is in letting people know then and on around the verse and. Why there's an NDA on this, I'm not really sure because the PTU doesn't have an NDA and then it's going to be on it right after. I know why they're doing it and it, it makes sense as a, a system to have in place because the it does cost money for bandwidth to send out all those patches. Like look at the last PTU we had, right? PTU A, B, C, D, E and there's nothing really on it uh, to, to for a lot of people, right? And... The people are downloading that like constantly, and it it costs a lot of money to send that out yep. to a lot of people, and so this is a smaller test group of people that they know are active and consistent with this, and and uh, they can put under that NDA. But the NDA is very strict; like it's something they want you to send in photo ID, um, all like they already have all your information, but they want your ID and and everything else as well. And I'm just curious to know how you feel about that. Um, I think everybody and their moms know how I feel about it, but I'm curious to know how you feel about it. I, I personally don't mind it. If they want to keep something... Um, the Okay, about the Evocati thing, I mm -hmm. think maybe part of the reason behind having an NDA on it was that they didn't want people to get upset about special snowflakes and things like that. And maybe they were hoping people weren't like, oh, Evocati, let's post to Reddit, even though it says don't fucking mention yeah. any of it. Yeah. So, like... I wasn't going to mention anything to anybody mm. because they asked us not to, basically, you know? So um, that could have been part of it. And I think the real, like, Illuminati thing that people are thinking is, like, maybe the people that are in Evocati are going to get to try things like Star Marine way before they're ready or um, Squadron 42 and things like that. Well, the, I don't. I really thing, don't think that's what it is. The only thing that I think the NDA makes sense for is Squadron 42. If they do put Squadron 42 stuff in there, and yeah. if they let us know ahead of, obviously we won't be able to share that with you. But if they yeah. let us know ahead of time and say, yeah, okay, Squadron 42 stuff for those who don't want to have any spoilers, don't check this out. Yeah. But for those who don't care or whatever, um, do this. And and what do you think? Do you think stuff is going to get leaked anyways? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Like the the problem with the NDA is is you can just post somewhere on a different name and like how are they ever gonna 
I get yeah. I get streaming and YouTube because you would want yeah. to put your content on right. your stream or your YouTube to make it make it more popular. But these people that post to Reddit, they can just do it under any name they want and and that's that's why well, I don't they're going to have like uh, any sort of like I don't know if you know this but my roommate does a lot of testing uh, for Microsoft and he does it at home. So I see games like uh, that I think I know of games that are coming out that nobody even knows about yet for Xbox, yeah, but probably. who cares for consoles? But it, so I'm always in the living room hanging out, and I won't even know it's whatever because I don't pay attention to that space. But he'll be playing like I remember he was playing Assassin's Creed a couple months before it came out, and it had his yeah. like username, and every once in a while the screen would flash, and it would his username was always on the screen somewhere. And yes. So I'm wondering and if if they're going to do something like that. I've played I've played alphas that have NDAs. Uh, sort of recently, and they're exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Your screen name, your email address, everything is just on the screen. <laughs> yeah. So that would, if they really want to have an NDA, that's going to be the way that they have to do it. Yeah, so, and it would have to pop around. Yeah, like right? they would. Yeah, they would have to make it difficult to remove. That's for sure. Or or cover, because yeah. that would be something that would be easily exactly. Um, so that that's something that would need to happen if if they're really going to do some. Some high-level NDA stuff for people, which mm. I, I still do not think that it's going to be. Yeah. Um, but that's I think it's more like in case a feature doesn't come in that people were waiting for. Like for example, uh, I think the 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 group is testing maybe at the end of the month or something like that. I heard. So the like, what if Nix was part of the testing? Mm -hmm. But Nix is maybe planned for two point four, but not not quite. And maybe it's not they ready decide they to instead. they decide to scrap it last minute. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean it's so a instead of people yeah. showing it and then it not coming out and then people getting upset. Yeah, the more I, I think about it, the more I think that we might see Squadron forty two stuff in it, possibly. Um yeah, maybe. and I th I think that's may that I mean in it it makes the most sense for the NDA and how serious they're doing it. Like yeah. with with IDs and, and everything. And uh NC Pokey says I guess and, and uh, the Twitch chat says, I guess if there's no NDA and certain streamers such YouTubes might have an advantage. Um, well, currently with the PTU, there is only 6,000 people that get invited to that. Uh, Soros and I are lucky enough to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. That gives us an advantage right there. Yeah. So um, there's no NDA on that. That gives us a huge advantage. I'm able to put out um, things on YouTube before, um, you know, 98% of the community is able to. So Yeah. Um and there's been a controversy. I just learned of this today, and I, I know you you have well. I haven't really read up any of it though. I've noticed it in some titles and some people's streams, and I I noticed it was on. <laughs> I noticed it was on Reddit and stuff like this. And this is the lag switch controversy. Lag switching. Uh, I'm not FPS looking forward games. to this conversation. It's going to yeah. happen. There's nothing you can do about it. I know. <laughs> there's no there's no preventative measures that you can do. And it's... Oh, yeah, there is. You ready? Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm yeah. gone. I'm gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but um, how big of an issue do you think it actually is? I don't even think it is a thing. I think it's a non-issue as well. I, I think, think it's a complete non-issue. It's fucking Arena Commander. It's a pretend video game within a video game. Yeah, if, it doesn't even count for anything right now. It doesn't count for anything. If I mean, it it literally is... A, but, like, Arena Commander, the entire thing is a giant dick measuring contest. That's all it yeah. has been for the last eight to months to since a year. Since the game's been out. Since, since the game's been out. Since, oh, my God. I'm at the top. Well, since the leaderboards yeah, have been out. Yeah, since the leaderboards have been out. Okay, uh, now, now, what about in, in more seriousness, what about this as an issue moving forward after the game's released? Uh, if it... Well, that's the best part of it being an alpha. I don't know if you're able to... Like, I don't know anything about lag switches. Okay, so but, from... The, I, I may be wrong, but from what I understand, yeah. lag switches are popular in... in Mostly console games, um, okay. uh, because obviously it's it, for the most part. If you want to cheat in a PC game, it's a lot easier um, yeah. because a lot of the stuff is on your client end. Now, Star Citizen is doing a lot of things on uh, the server end, and the reason that's so popular on consoles is because you can't really <coughs> access. You can't. It's hard. It's it's not impossible, but it's a lot harder to cheat yeah. on on console. So what they have is they have their um, their Ethernet cable. Right, that's plugged into the back of 
their console. Okay. And they they literally put a switch, like a light switch or something, if they if they're smart enough or they know how to do electrical work and wire an RG45 cable and make it so they can turn on and off the uh, their internet, pretty much. So there may be software things you can do with this on the PC. Not sure, but I know you can. This is how they do it. On, I'm pretty sure this is how they do it on consoles, anyways. Okay. So they briefly turn it off and back on, and what happens is because the client isn't sending any information, they can't die. But then your client is is trying to send that information out the entire time, and so when you see somebody else, you're shooting them, but they're and and when it reconnects, they take all the damage and they die instantly. And then when you get shot at, it doesn't register because you were offline for that point in time so it didn't see it as fair or something i'm pretty sure that's how that sort of uh i'm pretty sure that's how they work i could be wrong i could be completely wrong but i'm i'm gonna go with a 70 percent sure that's now how they work. Wh where i was gonna go with that before you started explaining what it was was i guess it's okay that it happens now because maybe there can be some preventative measures done but there's no preventative like, measures sounds like there are none no now that you've so it, it. it it depends on how they they send the information back and forth and how that works now the yeah. thing is is i could see someone who's new to star citizen jumping in and going into fps and being like oh people are using lag switches already yeah when the game is right but super laggy but it's just the game is super laggy and whatever but they the that is essentially what we're seeing now is what you would see with a lag switch. Like people popping around and yeah. like sliding around and doing that kind of stuff. That is, is sort of um, how you can tell in a lot of other games um, that are obviously more complete yeah. than Star and Citizen. But there is no real um, remedy for this. Although I don't, I, to be honest, I don't think it's that, that, uh, what is the word? Uh, I don't think it's that widely used. No, and and I think the people that are being accused are the guys that are all at the top of the leaderboard. And I would assume. Um, well, yeah, I think those were the ones that were being accused. I mean, they were like calling their organization out specifically. I'm not going to mention any names. I don't. I don't think it's appropriate to. But what I what I do think is happening is people are getting mad because they're getting wrecked and mm -hmm. the game's laggy and whatever like these guys are the best pilots in the game you die quickly it happens um so i really don't think that that's what's going on and if yeah. those guys are doing that and it's really that kind of uh if it really means that much to them then you can yeah. have it i mean it doesn't matter to me but the um i i was kind of explaining this on stream i don't i didn't think that they were using them i fought against them before Mm -hmm. And I never noticed anything like that. Uh, I think the only issue that I've ever had with anybody in any game that's on, especially on the top of the Battle Royale leaderboards, is it seems that there's teaming. I yeah, think and that's the thing. Discussing is, that more than anything. Yeah, that that's what I was going to say. Is I think the is biggest issue is, the the is Battle Royale going in with a group of people yeah. and then not fighting against like, those people. Yeah, and just go. I, I mean, I've done it before. I'm not going to lie. You know, I've gone in with other people and, and we've been like, okay. <laughs> right and just change it up but um yeah i mean that's something that they they need to find a way to make it so that's it's simple. harder to get into those kind of groups just that's make it simple. so you can invite friends to that that's super simple when the when the game does come out um there's going to be gms and things like that and you mm -hmm. file complaints and they'll see what's going on and that's it it really just doesn't matter right now um so i really don't think it's an issue i don't know why it's on reddit i kind of uh, would I don't know, I just, to not yeah. take part in in that thread because it just sounds like people are making shit up and mm -hmm. and stirring shit up just to stir shit up and and I really don't. It's, it's, see I it. mean that's sort of a pattern I've seen. Yeah, I fought against all of those pilots that people are talking shit about, and they're all really good pilots, and I've, they don't I, they, they the, don't need to do it. So there I don't are think people they are that I don't even like, <laughs> and I don't like I don't think anybody's nobody I've ever come up against I would say is using that. I could be wrong, but yeah, I've never experienced it, and I fought I don't against think almost I've, I don't think I've ever experienced it. That's been brought up. Um, so I'm not saying it's not happening, but I think it's if it is happening, it's a lot smaller. Uh, it's a, it's a minority think. for sure. 
um, compared to to how many people are actually doing it. But moving forward onto news, we have a whole bunch of news. Um, I didn't even get anything in from around the verse this week, just because we had so much stuff come in from uh, the monthly report. So the first thing I'm going to talk about uh, is my baby, the caterpillar. Um, yeah. The white box is happening right now of that, and they're the concept work, concept art for cargo, and the crew habitation modules are being worked on. That's exciting. Oh, I'm so excited for that ship. There, there's a bunch of ships, actually, that we're going to see are, are being worked on right now um, by some really awesome people. And the Reliant is almost ready for the hangar. Now, do you think that the Reliant is going to come in and it's going to be flyable right away? I, I think I think you'd think that, but I, I, I don't really think don't. That. I think they're going to they're going to take the steps. Yeah, I don't I don't think that. I think that the Starfire will be flyable before the Reliant. Yeah, I think. I think what, that in yeah, all reality. Starf oh, go ahead. They want us to play around with it in yeah. our hangar, you know. Yeah, I think in all reality, I think we're gonna see. Uh, no, this is speculation, but I think we're gonna see the Reliant in the hangar, and the Starfire flyable next patch. Yep. Um, at at minimum, um, power plants. There's a new section in the hollow table now. Yes. Um, that include power plants. And I believe there's two different types right now. Um, but as the game goes on, there'll be more added to that and everything like that. And that's something that they're, uh, wanting to work on quite a bit. I know no, nobody likes the hollow table, um, but for right now, it's what we got. <laughs> yeah. Um, and oh, power plants are going to be big. I think like getting all these things, I can't wait till we have everything in and functioning because power plants are going to be a big thing because you're going to. They're, they're, how they're explaining how power plants are going to work is like you have a pool of power. Yeah. And, you know, you can put on some things, but you better make sure that it doesn't cap that pool or go over that cap of the or pool. Or heat it, and then you need or, to make sure your cooling's on point yeah, and everything. So you're really going to have to use your mind and, and maybe take out a notepad or the calculator a little bit and, and start figuring some things out that make sense. I think we're going to start seeing, because of uh, coolers and power plants in particular... Uh, that have come out, we're going to start seeing some some changes to the way people play the game, I think. Right. And and we're going to see a lot of different, unique builds. And I think there's going to be a lot more variety in the builds. And that's up good. In, in I, I mean, what, it's great. It's going to be cool because you're going to see something and you're not going to just be like, oh, that's a Hornet. I know what's going on. I know what he's with that. Uh, yeah. I know he's you see a Saber, with... you know he's coming with four yeah. Tarantulas. You know it. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> right. And it's like, well. Once that stuff comes in and changes, especially with like the ballistic weapons doing their thing with having to refill them and stuff like that, it's gonna be really cool. Uh, Sean Tracy, uh, who I haven't seen in what's a while. he up to? I don't know. He's been working on uh, character customization tech, and they're prototyping on how that's gonna work. So I, r I really hope they push that, man. I really hope so too. I know he's really adamant about it. and He's really excited about it. Every time I've talked to him. Um, he is is very adamant about it, it being awesome and he's aware of black desert online and he's aware of apb reloaded and all these yep. other games that have awesome customization and he wants to be on par if not better than those yeah i mean this is star i mean that's citizen. his goal yeah this is star citizen they can't do it half ass. they can't yeah at, at least okay so at least on the art end of things they can't do it half ass. yeah right like, I think a lot of the things right now might seem half-assed that they're putting in, how are they implementing things? Mm -hmm. It's because they're implementing them at their early stages that are going to build from there. Yeah. But the, and, and that might happen with character, well, that is what's going to happen with character customization, essentially, right? Like, we might only get to be able to change our clothes mm -hmm. in this next patch. Yep, maybe your and hair. Our, and our armor. Or you yeah. have a choice of six faces or something, you know? Yeah, which which I don't even know, like, the what was so disappointing about um the way the it wasn't disappointing but was kind of like frustrating um in a good way of the live stream with Chris Roberts a, a few weeks ago yeah. was he just started going off on what we were going to get awesome <laughs> right yeah. awesome but there was no timeline of of what patches we were going to get those in <clears throat> so like yeah we know we're going to get uh eight faces or whatever right like uh four on one side four on the other or eight on one side eight on the uh, like girls guys all that stuff but 
we don't know when the hell any of that's going to come. So mm-hmm. hopefully that comes with character customization, customization in the initial one. But maybe not. Maybe it's just clothes to start. Maybe it's just armor to start. Um, but either way, it'll be cool. And, and uh, But it'll be the initial, you know? Yeah. And it'll get built from there. So it should be cool. Also, they had their alien specialist or alien language specialist at CIG. Um, from what it sounds like, they have the Vanduul language all fleshed out. Oh, yeah, they've had um, it fleshed out. And then we're going to see on ATV tomorrow, they're mm-hmm. going to have an interview with him, I believe. Yeah, and his name is Britton Watkins. Yeah. Mr. Watkins. Mr. Watkins, making languages. Yeah. Making words and things. Yep. Um, now, there's another thing uh, that's also being worked on, and that's the shield emitter system. And the shield emitter system is being worked on because it's going to be changing. The way that it is now isn't the same that it's going to be. I think it's going to be more akin to... Uh, you're going to have, for each shield, so each shield face, you have a, your own emitter, right? So yeah. on a Super Hornet, um, instead You'd of having, four. you would have four of them, right? Instead of just one big one. Or on, you know, any other ship where it's like, oh, uh, speaking of Sean Tracy, who I haven't seen in forever, and I miss him with all of my heart, my uh, Canadian brother from my Can- another Canadian mother has uh, working, shown man. up in chat. Working hard. He's in chat right now. Is he? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Nice. Criminal. Yodel. Oh, he's Mr. Criminal? Yeah. yeah. I didn't X-X-X know that. Criminal. That was his name. Yeah. So, Yo-yo. Um, yeah, it's good to see you. Hope you're... I know he, he moved over to uh, Los Angeles. And he's been busy. Busy working. Busy, get, busy, busy little bee. Right working busy. hard. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's working on uh, the character customization tech. I don't know if he's going to... Be able to share customization is coming it'll be shopping first though you just switch our clothing and armor then the next cool. phase is the actual customization of that stuff like changing your face etc awesome i know that that like i said i've seen him talk about that and and i'm really excited that he is working on that so pretty awesome so much traffic in la so much traffic um a uh, major focus uh during the month in austin like uh sean just said there is shopping Shopping, so the shopping, shopping, shopping and persistence and all that other stuff. Um, so that's something we sort of knew they were working on and yeah. and whatever, but it's just sort of nice to have that uh, verification in there. Uh, no longer are ships going to be organized in the hangars via website. Um, so instead, you're going to walk up to a bay in the hangar and choose what ships go where in the game. Now, I'm curious on how they're going to implement that um, into a non-breaking my immersion way. Like if there's... Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think, personally, the best Your way to do Your immersion's going to get broken initially, I think. N- and initially, initially. But I think, yeah. far end, the best way to do it is to have separate rooms for separate ships. Right? So instead of having that big, huge, sprawling open bay, right? Have those. So those things are just always there. Right? Yeah. But then have, if you want to call on other ships, you can just have a separate room that you have to go and walk into. So you can't see it coming in or leaving or whatever. Yeah. So you could just say, oh, it's, and just put like some mechanical arms at the top and say, oh, it's all moved by mechanical arms or something. Do you, do you see what Sean just put in? He says it works now. It's just buggy as hell at the moment, at, well, which is understandable. Yeah. You guys will love the hangar port modifications. Uh, that's what we yeah. call it. But the ship spawns pretty abrupt. So it kind of just like. Yeah, right now it's just like. Pops in. Pop in, pop out. And, and that's yeah. how, obviously, a lot of the first... And that's what we were talking about earlier, right? Like, a lot of the first implementation stuff is just the base mechanic of it doing it. And then they work on that over time, which is really cool. Um, so, yeah. Uh, really excited to see that. And that's also going to happen... The item ports is what I believe they call that. And that's also going to happen with uh, your hangar flare and things like that. You're going to be able to move that around. Um, Chris Smith and Josh Coons, the guys that are were working on awesome the cart guys. wall, awesome guys. We got to hang out with them in Austin when we yeah. were down there. Are now working on the Drake Herald, um, which is really cool. It's a ship I own. I like when they yeah. work on ships. <laughs> yeah, I love it when when Drake ships get some. Love. Those guys are really really good three D artists. They if if you guys don't know them, they, they did. They mesh the, so well together too. They, their personalities are awesome together just like in in life just talking to them but i think it really goes into their work too they were the guys who did the constellation andromeda rework which mm-hmm. is super sweet uh and they worked on the um on the card wall scout as yeah. uh as sora said 
and now they're they're going to make our uh, herald. Yeah, awesome. and and they work in close proximity to each other, and you can yep. just tell like when we were down there, like they're like best friends. <laughs> like they like they, <laughs> they hang, out hang out after work, yeah. for sure. They hang yeah. out. They definitely hang out after work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So moving on to Foundry Forty Two. Uh, most of the work on the cover system is complete. I know a lot of people are asking, oh, Star Marine, where's our cover system and where's all this other stuff? So this is something they're working on. Right now they're polishing uh, the procedural cover system. So um, the procedural stuff is basically it's, this is something that you can hide behind, whether it ducks or you go up to it. So when you walk up to it, instead of having to push a button, it'll just automatically move you into the position properly and do the animation properly. That's cool. Which is going to be really awesome. Um, it allows you to slide and shoot around edges and has moved on to the vaulting and, and mantling. I don't know what mantling is. I wonder if we kind of have that a mechanic. bit now. Like when you're in your um when you go through the Star Fair if you if you have if you have it, you know when you walk by the the ladder, it just kind of pulls you into the ladder and mm -hmm. into that animation. So we kind of like might already have it a little bit in a sense. Maybe. And that thing is that thing's magnetic, man. That thing pulls me from far away. <laughs> that thing away. pulls me from so maybe, 20 maybe feet away. Yeah. yeah, maybe initially we might be like, no, I was not trying to Yeah, that one ladder is, is a little crazy in the Star Fire. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what it's going to be, is it's going to be like, okay, when you're this close, it'll it, it'll just duck you down. Um, yeah. it, it It's going to be interesting to see it come in, though, for sure. Yeah. Um, they're also working on landing improvements. So I know they've talked about they want to see the compression of the ship, even like because when you land on um, a landing pad, they have artificial gravity. So they want it to feel like the ships have weight and have that sort of shock absorbing sort of thing coming down, I think. Um, so that's something they're working on. They've also started the radar and scanning implementation. So And that that's going to be exciting. I wonder if with the radar and scanning implementation we also get the like the uh Hornet Ghost and and uh Saber getting a little more stealthier aspects. Yeah. Um with those long range maybe scanners. They are in, but the thing just, is we don't have long range scanners in yet. Yeah, and so and you and can't just, tell. I think like the stealthy mechanics are sort of there, but they're just hard to notice at the yeah. moment. I wonder and maybe they'll be more how noticeable. long range scanners are going to be. Like, are you going to be able to sit in somewhere as far as Yella and scan Car Korea, or even long further than that? Maybe. Well, I mean, they kind of discussed a long time ago what their thoughts of. Remember when? I think it was when the the Endeavor came out, right? That uh. They would see, like, you could see maybe like an anomaly out in, in the distance, but mm -hmm. you'd have to maybe go a little closer to it or focus on it a bit more, and then you can get a sense of what it is. And, and they also talked about just the different levels. Like, there was a whole doc about it, if I remember, and uh, they talked quite a bit about it. And and I don't know if if the design of that has changed over the course of time because it was quite right. a while it's, ago. It's very, it's quite possible. Yeah, right? it would be interesting to see. Where where they're going now that they're actually instead of uh, concepting the the design of it and mm -hmm. actually implementing it if the, if anything's changed and and what it might be like now but I have I to be honest I have no idea the the radar thing is it's going to be really important and mm -hmm. that's one thing that I'm I'm not sh sure that I can comprehend at the moment yeah I know like. like Zane and a couple other guys are working on the UI stuff for that and mm -hmm. everything else as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. It, it, some of that stuff is also going to come over to the FPS port side of things as well, right? We have the radar and scanning coming in for that. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, but the same base mechanics still need to yeah. be in there for it to work. Um, there's also been incredible progress on the Idris and the Javelin. Yeah. Um, the Idris bridge, gravity room, armory, cargo room, and escape pods are done. Uh, on the Javelin... The bridge and the entire engineering deck are both done. Nice. Um, and I think they were, I think it was Chris that was talking about they're flying the address internally right now as well. A few people have said it. Aaron said it. Chris was talking about it in 10 for the chairman this week about how to land on it. Yep. Which was uh, it's interesting how like the address <clears throat> would be going 100 meters per second, let's say, and 
and you would kind of have to bring yourself to like 120 to bring yeah. yourself in or yeah. 110 or something like that. And I think the idea of that was really, really cool of the uh, just how to land on it. And he said, and he, he was saying how people were struggling a little bit and, and crashing into it and everything. So yeah, yeah. I think and there'll be a lot of that going on. Sean's teasing us in chat about how, I know. how awesome it is. Oh, I can CIC fly these. Yes. Yeah. All they do oh. is tease. All they do, All they do is tease yeah. and say soon TM. You know, and, this and stuff not as that... soon as you'd like, but soon. And uh, yeah. yeah, stop. <laughs> guys are the worst. Worst. No. Worst. He's, uh... We love you, actually. But... Yeah. Um, the F7A, which is the military hornet. Yeah. Um, and the Bengal are also being worked on. The Bengal's being sort of brought up to par. Um, obviously it was an asset that was made at the beginning of the Star Citizen funding and, and the concept of it and everything like that. But now it's, okay, the game, <laughs> the game needs it now and we need to yeah. sort of bring it up to, if you look back at the artwork of the Hornet from 2000, 2012 to now, they're completely It's different. changed so many times. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, that's going uh, as well. They've also taken a trip down to Lionhead Studios. Now, do you know what Lionhead Studios is? No. Okay, so Lionhead Studios is the studio that made games like Fable. Oh, um, yeah, I love and, Fable. Yeah, so their studio closed down. Yeah, and they were like in the middle of making a Fable and kind of stopped. Which yeah, really so sad. I was talking to my roommate about this. Because uh, he works for Microsoft and, and whatever, and... and What's happening is... And they were they an have, Xbox exclusive yeah, Xbox, for a while. Ex, I it is. I, I think it still is an Xbox, or was yeah. an Xbox exclusive. Yeah. So he had a demo on his of that game that they were putting out. Oh, that, wow. And it was like pretty much almost done. And they just decided to scrap it. Uh, it was going to be a free-to-play deal, I think. Okay. And uh, I think. I, I could have been mistaken on that. But yeah, they just decided... I think they were like 90% through the project. And they just decided to scrap it. So, and then the whole studio shut down and everything. So I know they went down there, and uh, they are are seeing if anybody, if any of the talented people from Lionhead Studios are interested in joining uh, yeah. Foundry Forty Two or CIG, which I think is a smart idea. You know, those all those people that all blindsided them, right? They didn't know Net that code that was guys. Happening. Yeah. They Get didn't em. know that that was, that was coming, and so it's like, oh, okay, so now it's nice of them to go down and say, hey, you know, if you guys need a job, we're here now, and we're looking for people, so that is good. Uh, Squadron 42 is still getting the bulk of the design resources, and levels are now locked down from a design and art layout standpoint. So they know what all of the levels for all the different places are going to be now, Sick. which is locked down. And then I guess they have to wait for this these this tech to come on, right? Like the item system, the component system, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff to actually be working. I would assume all of those need to be fully functional in order for Squadron 42 to come out, which is why I think, you know, obviously we would like them. I think we could have played in Crusader without them w mm -hmm. with the systems that we have now, but I think they need those ready. And then we kind of test them in Crusader and in Arena Commander and... Then they get to put them into a yeah. squadron when they're ready, right? Yeah. Um, and the audio team in at uh, Foundry Forty Two has also been super busy. Um, so much so, so they said audio team has been busy as ever this month. Audio team has been <laughs> as busy as ever this month. Yeah. Um, and I imagine that's just they're ramping up and getting everything ready for Squadron Forty Two. They're getting stuff for more content. We're getting more landing zones. We're getting more ships in. We're getting all more all of this stuff while still making sure everything else is up to par and keeping and updating everything else as well. So I imagine they're just crazy busy. And I don't think I don't know I don't know how big the audio team is. Um. But it is an important They're the largest of the studio, game. that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and then in Frankfurt, we have two more new ship weapons and a bunch of new FPS weapon concepts are in production and should be ready to be shown off soon. Now, I know last week on Redacted, we showed you guys, I believe it was the S8 stuff, right? So the oh, shotgun, the, uh, the, the, all yeah. that stuff, the shotgun, the sniper rifle, the, the AR rifles, the DMR, the pup. Uh, gun, the SMG. That um, looks, the concept art for that I know. was so I'm, awesome. I'm so excited to see those kind of 
those they kind of ranges, did stormtrooper which was cool. Those ranges of guns, right? So I hope we see, okay, that's from Bering, and then we get another one from Secure Sun, and we get another one from Joker, and we get another one from whatever, and we see that whole range of weapons. Um, that maybe they specialize in one or more types or something. I think that's really cool, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Frankfurt um, is doing with that stuff. EVA transitions are being worked on, and I actually have a video for this. <laughs> and we have some fun... We've we've definitely done fun EVA transitions in uh yeah yeah in our our streams and stuff like that so far. Well, this the first thing. What was the first thing you noticed about this photo, this video? Do you remember the first time you watched it? I I didn't. No, For me, so it was like it, with, it was the solid it, sixty I'm, frames per second, and I was like, oh I was my so god. Sick. Oh uh, yes, that it was super smooth. It's just so smooth, and it just looks so good. Yes. That um, was that actually was the first thing that I noticed. Now, what's really cool like, about this is they have w what is essentially happening is when you're floating in space, you're a ragdoll. You're yeah. in, and so they have it. It's called driven ragdoll. So you're moving around and whatever. If you bump into stuff, you ragdoll around and whatever. And then when you're on uh, gravity, it's essentially internally called living character, right? Mm -hmm. So when you land and you're moving around and you're actually controlling your character, it's it's living character and then driven ragdoll and then when you drop and fall you're ragdolled until you animate out of it and go into that and it's really cool and just them showing like while the f the firing is happening and stuff and 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 all kinds of just the like, animations and the transitions are are getting better and better every time like while they're talking like while they're showing the EVA transitions like what i really get out of it is this is what the game's gonna feel like and look like mm -hmm. to us when it's optimized? Just yeah. how smooth it is and how great it looks. Do a barrel roll. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I know I've had a lot of fun with just the EVA in two point three point one, just goofing around, and we did bowling, yeah, sliding across the landing pads, and I got I got Kazu bowled all the way across the landing pad, ran into me, and shot me off of the landing pad. We, we were having a good time with it. Because, because the ground it doesn't have very much friction, uh, there was something I was trying to do. When I would go from one platform to another, like across through the ring, I would go yeah. and line myself up with the hallway and go yeah. as fast as I could and see how far I could slide up up the stairs and down the hallway. <laughs> um, and I've, I've done that... Uh, I've done that quite a few times. But yeah, I mean, that was pretty cool. Um, really looking forward to, to more of all of that stuff coming in, whether it's yeah. the procedural stuff or, or animations and just the polishing of everything and making it look awesome. I feel like we're, we, we have been thinking for a few weeks now, but we're right on the cusp of like some really, really cool stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. it, it, all come, it all starts with the persistence and then... And then um, I think you may have problems with your Skype here. Oh, I see. Yeah. No. no nothing I can do. No. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Port Olisar is getting a lot of work done, and a brand new shopping district will get added to the existing facilities. Um, so that's cool. They're going to be adding more to Olisar. Your video is starting to come in now. Um, they're going to be adding more to Olisar. Um, and we're gonna have shopping on all of our instead of on the just on the landing zones and stuff like that. So that's gonna be um, interesting. Um, what else? They're also adding a pirate and lawless base where players that have been a bit quote unquote naughty can respawn uh, after dying, where they can just dock without getting shot out of the sky by law enforcement. Because yeah, as turn you my know, leg switch on this. Yeah, leg switch. Sorry. Oh my god! But no, they, Chris talked about that a while ago. So that I'm looking forward to that happening. So when you become lawless, that's where you spawn in instead of in Alasar. Mm -hmm. Just cool. Right. Yeah, and it, it's it, in Alasar right now. The way that they want to have that mechanic is they want to have security flying around there and shooting down criminals. But if you're spawning there, you don't want to get shot as soon as you get in your ship. <laughs> like, you know, you want to be able to at least play the game and and do that. So it makes sense for them to get like a a space jail or a space mm -hmm. uh, pirate area going. Um, Hurston, uh, the, as a landing zone, is getting a lot of attention right now. 
We know that uh, Nyx is in those final phases or final stages of, of getting ready. So it sounds like Hurston is going to be one of the next ones. Yeah. Um, a lot of code work has come online for AI, and they've managed to do a lot of the behavior prototyping and subsumption stuff. I think we showed that last week. Um, they showed some of the subsumption on the uh, end of Around the Verse, right? Which is cool. Well, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And the... I think the I just I just want to see NPCs. I thought we would have seen this actually quite a long time ago, but I guess maybe they went a little hard harder core than than we thought. But I I'm really looking forward to seeing more or just NPCs in places like R Corp and when we do get Nyx. I hope mm -hmm. when they drop Nyx that we have NPCs walking around. I think that'll that'll be great. Yeah. Cuz we've heard so much about it now and I'm just ready I'm ready, to, I'm ready have it. to make it feel busier. even in a basic form. Yeah, just walking around and moving around and stuff. I yeah. mean, they kind of have them already in Area 18, but they they're they don't outside. Have them walking around, though, they, well, they know? do. They the ones that they do though, they have their animations of their holding the boxes and stuff hidden um, from the uh, obstructed from the player's view. I mean, they're kind of moving yeah. around in the, in the background, but they're not close but it's enough like a where video you can go. That just yeah, plays. exactly. Like you can't. They're interact like, with them or bump into them or and they're all and they're in areas where you're not technically supposed to get to right you know so we i think only managed to get there because we uh we, we snuck things. in yeah. snuck, snuck in places we weren't supposed to um and another system that they're pushing forward is loot generation which is going to handle how loot spawns across the world and that's not like a typical mmo where it's like oh you know like you saw me in division that's like a typical mmo you have your loot drops from bosses they have a rng chance of dropping such and such whatever what will happen is it'll depend i imagine on say when you're blowing up a ship for example um, what items are damaged and, and if it's salvageable or what the chances of that being salvageable and, and uh, being used as loot, whether it be uh, cargo, weapons, uh, components, those kind of things. Yep. Um, they're not happy with quantum travel how it is right now. I like um, it, but I wonder what it's they... It's not up to what... the level of, of things that they want, and they want to bring it, give it a major overhaul. And one of the reasons is our next point, which is the introducing the concept of interdiction. So stopping a ship from entering quantum travel, ranging from simply damaging them to so they can't do it, or specialized weapons and deployable devices. So yeah. th there may be devices that they can use inside the ship. You can have a spy inside the ship or, or some sort of thing that's similar to, say... How a sucker punch works to bring down a shield, it would be something that just turns off their stuff and just doesn't let them do that. So yeah. that's going to be interesting to see how the interdiction stuff sort of comes online and 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 what they're going to do with quantum travel moving forward. Yeah, because there's PvP sort of in Crusader. Like, yeah, well, it's typically, easy to run if, away. Yeah, it's, it's just way too easy to run away yeah. right now. So it's, it's exciting... To, like they, they mentioned a lot of this a long time ago, but to to actually be working on it now is like yes, give please, because uh, it 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 needs to come in to to really have that that cat and mouse game of oh he looks like he's going to start the quantum and then you mm -hmm. know you take whatever action that they they happen to put in for us to to stop it from going or I'm assuming maybe something like we'll be able to see a, a little slower what it looks like to have a, another pilot be in inter, uh, be in quantum right and actually physically pulling them out of it would be pretty interesting and awesome and uh moving on to behavior um there are the guys who are doing the website stuff and and integration of that uh there's a new ship reference make matrix coming soon um, but they want people to know that please note that while they're working to improve the ship stats page as always different ships are in different stages of development and some of them have been updated to draw from the new component system that are they're working on and some of them aren't drawing from that so it sounds like it's actually pulling that information it's pulling it from the actual game instead of them manually putting it in um, which is kind of cool because then if any changes happen to the ships, it changes on the ship stats page right away. 
Um, and also know that all of this stuff is is being worked on and ships change throughout the development cycle. And that's not because they necessarily change what the roles are or whatever, but it's more of a balancing thing and, and making sure that everything's all balanced properly. Um, but, I mean, that's sort of what that hints to me, and, and that seems really cool. The other thing that, that was really big and stood out to me was the multi-factor authentication. Um, is it in its static integration phase? I'm not entirely sure what that means. I don't know what that means either. Um, but it sounds like they're they're making some leeway on that, and that should be in uh, sooner rather than later. I really hope we get it soon. Cause yeah. I mean, you have lots people, of things at risk. Well, you have people with multi thousand dollars, like both of us, right? Have ten thousand yeah. plus accounts. Um, you know, Clifford's and Jaddy's a billion dollars in, right? So. <laughs> Like it, it, and I know most of our communities have a lot of money in, and, and with with things like, um, you know, passwords getting out there or whatever, it's nice to have that multi multi factor authentication for an account, um, especially like this. Um, and then I guess moving on to ten for the chairman, there were, there were a couple questions that were things that I thought would have been common knowledge but um he he does like to go over some things for people that are new but there were some things so there's something similar uh there will be something similar to what's on the website now on your moby glass uh and that is in the form of the app name skyline and you'll notice that skyline is actually already in the ui for your moby glass it just doesn't work at the moment yeah but in the future that's sort of where all of the stuff that you do on the website that pertains to the game will be in the game. What was it under that again? under the Skyline? Sky, yeah, Sky Skyline, Skyline, yeah, in in your mobile glass. Yep. Uh, they talk. They also he also talked about inheriting the velocity of your ship in EVA, but he also didn't. The, he, he like didn't, contradicted himself in that answer. Yeah, like he didn't. He doesn't want it to be like going twenty thousand meters per second or two thousand yeah. meters per second because you'd never be able to stop yourself. But he still wants it, so you still inherit some velocity. So I'm not sure how they're going to do that in a way that makes sense. But I'm sure they'll figure something out. Yeah. Um, but that is sort of what they want to do. Um, they also talked about game-wide events. And this is something they've talked about before. Um, and really excites me. Uh, it, and it's like, well, like these are like community events that they're going to run in the game with yes. GMs or... Or whatever, where it's like, oh, you know, something's under attack, or there's a big shipment coming through, or whatever. And these are going to be played in part by real people that are hired by CIG to do this stuff, or or be running the NPCs in the background. Yeah. Um, and essentially, who I think will actually be doing a lot of this and creating these events are guys like Ben and guys like Lando. Because um, during the... Oh my god, I'm... I'm drawing a blank right now. The Star Traders live stream on Clifford's channel. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the opportunity to ask questions to some some of the to Ben and and uh, some of the other guys. And I asked a question to Ben specifically, like, when Star Citizen comes out, like, there's not going to be a need for ATV. I mean, RTV is different because it's just kind of their yeah. um, weekly, you know, get together where we can talk about whatever. But what are you guys going to be doing as far as like the content that you're going to be putting out to the community? And he was like, oh, well, we will probably become GMs, essentially what GMs were in Ultima Online. And I was like, yes, he talked about Ultima Online because that's exactly what they did is yeah. they would see a group of players in an area and they would just go there and maybe just drop a monster out of nowhere and kind of be like, see if you guys can kill this and, and yeah. goof around. And, and now kind of what it's turned into is uh, these story driven events that happen over the course of maybe a couple weeks or whatever. Um, and then there's obviously the the wide story arc that I'm sure that Chris and the writers will have a part in. Mm -hmm. But the the things that Ben and Lando can do and and um, now Zylo, uh, community manager, right? Could when when they are taking part in those things, they can they can see that, you know, hey, Soros and Twerk and a bunch of people, there's all this big fight over here. You know, we can maybe do something interesting in the area. Uh, drop something cool there for them, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, I I was sort of wondering, like, how large or small will these be? But I think they'll they'll range. Yeah, I um, think what, what it'll probably be is the writers will create something like a 
uh, uh, this large story arc that happens over the course of a few months um, where there's uh, like like for example the the current one that's happening now is that the Vandal attacked uh, the Vegas system or whatever you know and that's that's the current story arc that I think will start the mm-hmm. Star Citizen universe with and then you know the the whole community will get together fight them off or whatever happens to happen. And then it'll tail into something else. But I think there'll be other smaller things. Like if they see uh, a large group of people maybe taking over an area or something like that. Or an economy starting to turn that, that they might be able to, you know, uh, speed that process up and, and make. They, I mean, they can do anything because they can be right. tiny things like make certain uh, materials or certain items be worth more in certain areas or worth less in other areas. Like at the drop of a hat. And or they can I, they can do all sorts they can of things. Do all Turn, kinds of things in there. Yeah. yeah, like they had always mentioned um, uh, the economy on certain planets affecting the way that it looks. Like they might they might have a little bit more graffiti or things like that. They can totally change those around. You know, they can do. I think mm-hmm. there'll be the large story arcs, and then there'll be the small things that you might notice every now and then at, at some of these other places. But it could it could get really crazy it's that's a really good discussion to have one day but i feel like i would have to think about it for a long time yeah you know um there's also going to be secured space where it's possible to have terrorism or acts of anarchy things that are sub, that are in ue zones or secured areas of space but aren't 100 percent secure there will also be places that are 100 percent secure yeah like but, you said like earth and terra you're not doing anything there yeah yeah, but and maybe they'd be armistice zones like we have now at Ar- at Alasar. Well, I don't think we're gonna have armistice zones in the way that we have them now. No, not the way that we no. have them now, but like essentially, I feel like yeah, like there'll be if you do anything wrong, you're going to hurt. get wrecked. Yeah, you are going to hurt uh, quite yeah. a bit. Um, yeah, you wanted to talk about procedural planet discussion, so I have a video here. Yeah. And and the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I think people got pissed, and I and I don't think it's fair that people got upset because they kind of explained it a bit more on RTV. But the the day after ATV, I mean, I looked at it and kind of I wasn't upset, but I was kind of like, okay, well, this looks a lot like from pu- people of the planet, but just on the planet. And the guys on RTV kind of explained that the. Like we could see the title right now. It says "Procedural Planets Continuing Development." Mm-hmm. So I think it really goes into um, where where they're going with it. So on RTV later, they showed like we see it. The guy's running around the planet. It looks yep. amazing. It looks a lot like what people people the planet did. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I when what what the guys tend to do when they talk about oh we're going to show you the procedural planets on ATV like they get us really excited. Yeah. And then we get super excited and then maybe it doesn't live up to our ex- expectations, right? Because what we had been hearing on ATV was, oh my God, Chris and, and Aaron came to the UK and it looked amazing. Oh my God. And we saw it and it looks, I mean, of course it looks fantastic, but it looks a lot of, of what we saw from People of the Planet. It doesn't look like much. They made much iteration on it from right. from what we saw already, right? What we what we didn't see was people running around on uh, instead of just being static on People of the Planet. Oh, yes. We didn't see the collision and stuff like that mm-hmm. happening. We didn't see um, them moving around outside so, of their their visual camera and things. Exactly. like Exactly. So they made a ton of progress uh, from what we, you know, like none of mm-hmm. that stuff existed at the time. At least, at least we couldn't see it, right? So they made a ton of progress from what we're seeing now. But also, what they said on RTV is this was from a month and a half ago, and this video actually was from before Chris and Aaron saw what they were super excited about Mm -hmm. in Germany. So I think what they're actually doing with ATV is that they're going to show us the progress of everything as, so we see it in at that step. And then I think maybe next week we're going to see it at another step and then another step and then another step going forward until they actually release it to us. And then we get to play with it, right? you know, and then, and then it will iterate from there as well. So I think people were, were kind of, I like preemptively like what the hell it's not that much better than what we saw you know so I think we're gonna see the the iterations on it in the coming weeks slash months over time and and I think that was the whole point of showing a month and a half old video was to 
to show us the progression because that's the whole point of ATV and that's the whole point of being right. part of the process, right? Is seeing how things progress from one place to another. And that's what's fun about it. So have fun. Smile, people. Yeah. Don't get upset. <laughs> Jeebus! <laughs> Don't get upset. Smile. It's um, cool. I want to remind everybody that we are taking questions. Uh, if yes. anybody has any questions for myself or Twerk, whether it's on about Star Citizen or streaming or YouTube or why, what color car Twerk is going to get. Um, feel free to ask us, you know, the answer to life. We'll do our best to answer. Please yeah. note that we are not developers for Star Citizen. However, you're lucky today where we do have some developers in chat. Um, so if they are possible to answer it, maybe they can... Dropping bombs, they too. Can, uh, they can help out as well. But, um, yeah, feel free to get those in there, uh, and we will take a look. Our first question is coming from Demonic Mongoose. And he asks, With a new Misk Miner, said to be for one person... How much more basic do you think the mining process will be? For example, the Orion has the ability to view heat maps and prevent gas pockets, etc. from exploding in your face. This is a specialized role on the Orion. With only one seat, do we think it won't exist in the MISC? Uh, and so make the, much, the role much more risky or dangerous. Okay, so... I'll let you do this one because you're the mining yeah, guy. Yeah. I definitely read the mining doc a thousand times. So the, the heat thing the, and the the gas pockets and all that stuff exploding in your face that's totally still going to be there because um, you could see that it was part of the um, like even in the concept art it was totally part of a screen on the turret that you were on using the the mining laser right right so if you have a mining laser it's most likely going to be fitted with that stuff and with mining you're still probably going to have the missile that you're going to have to shoot into the into the uh, asteroid to find out what's in it and maybe where the pockets are. And that's scan actually, it, right? Yeah, it scans it, and that's actually how you get that information, I believe, about the, the heat maps and the gas pockets and all that good stuff, right? What's different is, from the Orion, is you're not going to have as much space. Uh, you're not going to be able to process the ore, most likely, on the ship uh, like you were the Orion. Um, again, it's only one seat, so you're going to be doing a lot of the stuff uh, yourself. Uh, the advantage of it is that you're going to be able to go into tighter spaces and, and maybe get some some more uh, rare ore and, and stuff like that. But I don't think it's going to be as basic as you might think, right? Um, I think it's just going to be a smaller scale and and not have the the um, the processing plant on it that turned it into like from rock to you know, kind of usable metal or whatever. So I think you, you'll probably lose that process. And and another thing that they kind of said was you might mine the ore and then pass it off to like a whole C or something like that, a whole A, a whole B, and then they would move it on. So maybe it won't have that much cargo space as well. Yeah, because they said it's it's smaller than a freelancer. That's not I a lot of cargo space. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a lot of cargo space for stuff. I yeah. think it's it's going to be more focused on for exotic materials, maybe. Yeah, is what you're going to want to use the smalling mining ship for. Yeah. Um, instead of like mass of like well, iron, and it, maybe you're looking and it's for your your starter. It's stuff. your starter miner. It's your starter mm -hmm. ship, right? So if you're gonna, you know, it's it should be a lot cheaper than than the Orion. So if you want to get into mining, it's something that's exciting you, but you don't want to break your bank. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's going to be the first ship that probably debuts with mining. There you go. Uh, our next question is from Steve J, thirteen ninety seven, and he asks, "How hard do you think it should be to interdict a ship? As in, how close to their route should you have to be for it to work?" i.e. a kilometer, 10 kilometers, 100 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers. And oh, how wow. long do you think it should be able to run before you have to turn it off? Or should it be something you can leave on as long as you want? This is really why I want to play Elite, because I want to see how they do it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to let you answer this one, because I'm not really Okay, sure. so I'm not sure how they're going to do it with a ship already in movement um, to bring them out. I don't know if there if that's even going to be a possibility. If you're going to, you'll need some sort of long range scanner to see them coming from a far distance, anyways, which we can't see now. Um, in that case, then maybe you'd have to charge up your thing and spool it so you create this thing that makes you look like a planet that stops them, and then 
Uh, like they said before, any damage to your shields or anything, any damage to you at all, right, that's ongoing at that point in time, maybe there's some sort of cooldown function that's built into the ship that doesn't allow you quantum travel because it would kill you. It would yeah. just blow up your ship. So I think that's how they're going to do it. Uh, how far for that to work? Um, for in so terms of say. in terms of doing damage, as long as someone can do damage from you from a, a certain distance, it doesn't matter. If you're taking damage, you can't do anything. Uh, in terms of stopping you, um, with that, I I think you're you're not going to be chasing people to interdict them. You'll have to be in their way already. I think. I'm not like, really yeah, sure. Yeah, they cross your path. Maybe? Like they, yeah. So say for example. I'm sitting at some comm relay, right? Mm -hmm. And I see someone at Korea. And I know that Korea has a shipment of whatever going from there. And they sell for the most at this other... Let's say they sell for the most at Yella. Okay, this is all yeah, you know. You know you're in the middle of a trading lane. You know that they're going to go to Yella. So what you do is you go to the middle of Yella. And you create your your gravity well or whatever it is that they're you're doing and then when they're so what they get to do their uh quantum but then when they come up to you their ship gets confused and pulls them out of quantum because they think they're about to hit a planet and instead they it's just you and then once you hit them they can't quantum out so then uh you can either say something or or do whatever maybe there's a non-lethal weapon that you can use that would just shut down their ship i.e the jokers or something yep. similar to it or um, warlock or uh you just do mass amounts of damage and kill them yep so that'll be used on both sides both for the bounty hunters and for the pirates um but i think that's going to be the way to do it i don't think it's a range thing per se i think it's more of um whether they're able to quantum in the first place or stopping them in their tracks on their way from one destination to another. So if you know of shipping lanes that are high high priority and whatever, then you're going to want to sit there and just have your generator yeah. going. I, um, I wonder if you you have your generator going and you happen to pull out like 10 ships and then you're like, yeah. oh, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was a mistake. Let me run. But I think I mean, that may be possible. I think a big part of it is what you hit on more than more than this gravity well thing is is the if I'm doing damage to a ship, maybe they're not able to leave would be the 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 first drop of it, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, it wouldn't allow you to do too much. Uh, allow you to spool up your quantum drive and and maybe the spool up will be a bit longer than what it is currently um, and so on. You know, maybe it's like a 10 second thing. Or whatever. Right. Yeah, it'll be maybe it's something like the the warlock has with its EMP thing, right? You gotta wait for it to charge and then you can yep. use it. Oh definitely, yeah, charging it up. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Uh our next question comes from Akira Eleven. What do you think about shields going offline when going EVA and the ship becoming too vulnerable? As not being able to lock the ships, how would this work with persistence since not even strong ships are easy to destroy when the shields are offline and it's not too difficult to hijack them? And would a hijacker be able to keep a hijacked ship until it's destroyed? Okay, so the last thing, yes. If you steal a ship, you keep it in the game. Yeah. That's the plan. You keep it's it. Gonna be it'll have a ship ID that stolen, you... Stolen. Yeah. yeah, it'll come up as stolen until you change that. But you can steal people's ships and keep them and they lose them. Um, until they get replaced via insurance or whatever. Now, in terms of when ships blowing up, when they're on landing pads or not being able to lock them and things like that, those are. Th this is what we were talking about earlier when we said these are just first implementations of things. That you will be able to lock your ship. You will be able to have uh, more protection on your ships, especially if you're in an armistice zone. You're not going to want to just be shooting uh, park ships and things like that. I don't think you'll have the opportunity to kill something before something else will kill you. The big issue, though, is that currently the ship, as soon as the pilot leaves the pilot seat, the ship shuts down. Right, but they've, now, when, they've talked but, about but leaving that, shields but, on and things like that. Yeah, like, is that prevented? Is that happening now because you can't lock your ship? Or, so when you do lock your ship, that'll functionality might get... 
Well, we don't uh-huh. have, we don't have any of that sort of functionality of shutting down or starting up the ship or or yeah. deciding what to leave on kind or of what s- leave off. It just turns off when you get out. That it's just that like I said, it's just that base functionality that's yeah. in there right now. So, I don't so. I don't think this is uh intended to be uh the end of what happens when you land your ship. I think this is just the very very beginning of it. Just like yeah. a lot of things in this. And and I don't think that there's any real reason for concern um, at this point for that. But and it, speaking of that, like I do see shields get kind of pinged when they're landed now, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it is as effective as when you're flying, because the you know when somebody flies by a ship that's landed, they kind of just blow right through it. I know it's because it's not moving and they're able to really pound it, but um, there has to be something that can be done because it's really it's it's got to be the most annoying and frustrating thing and, <laughs> and kind of rage worthy thing in game at the moment is just I get out of my ship and somebody blows it up all day Every day, and I can't deal with it anymore. Today, today, somebody this this was actually pretty funny. Somebody was, I guess, stream sniping me as a as a joke. But I got out of my <laughs> my GN scout and as and I grabbed a weapon at Yella. And as I was going back to it, he literally just flew right through it, blew it up. He survived and flew away. <laughs> and flew away. Yeah, <laughs> he just rammed into it. Didn't even shoot it. Just <laughs> rammed into it and blew it up. That was it. Yeah, that he was like, see ya. Those. Uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, our next one is from UFG Man, and he says, "In the monthly report, Foundry Forty Two reported working on the Xion transport ship interior. Do you think that's going to be another Xion ship that's offers the backers?" Um, I think they sell uh, the Xion sell some of their ships to citizens, so I wouldn't I. I, think I would imagine the scout wouldn't be the only one. The scout wouldn't be the only one. I think yeah. uh, like a transport ship and things like that may. I mean, for me, I hope so. And the reason yeah. I hope so is I want that variety. I want variety for, for not only what ships do, but how they look. I want redundancy. I know it's not important right now. But as the game progresses, I want to see redundancy in ships a lot. I want to see just like we have Hondas and BMWs and Fords and... Chevy and Lamborghini and Ferrari and Caterpillar and uh, Yamaha and all this other stuff. I want to see that sort of variation in the game as well. And that's what really makes it feel like you're not... like I, I don't know. Have you ever played a racing game where all of the traffic is the same car? Yeah. It's, it's lame. really lame, right? Yeah. And even though like everything else is really on point and stuff, it, the, one of the my favorite racing series is Tokyo Extreme Racer. And one of the last games that they made before they they uh, cut off that uh, series of games was they had these trucks as the traffic because there was a rule with I think uh, some of the the car manufacturers didn't want them street racing. They said, okay, we're just going to put these one truck in and that's it. And so it was just the same thing. And I don't want to see that in the game. I want to see that variation. I want to see that. Um, everything in there and now everybody's naming all the different no uh, just one guy's naming there we go. Oh, yeah <laughs> so yeah. i just challenged them to keep going yeah yeah you got this you got this yeah uh wikipedia is your friend but yeah i i hope that we see the alien ships and and more variations and stuff become uh available to backers i mean if they're making the the oh. even if they're not available to backers i really want to see them flying around like mm-hmm. available to steal, maybe not available to buy, um, but I do want to see them flying around because of that. I want to, if I get close to GN space, I don't want to just see GN scouts flying around. I want to see multiple different kinds of GN ships. I want to see what a what a huge GN freighter looks like, what a GN cap ship looks like, and things like that. Work, I, have, I have something to show you. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, thank you for the see question. See your face on stream. Uh, uh, you I was like, what is he? I didn't even um, say anything. Okay, so I have images of the Caterpillar interior. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Show. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, So this is part of the habitation module. Here. Where is this coming from? This is uh, the sub vault, yeah. Yeah. Caterpillar. Really cool. Look at you got some shoes over here. You got some books. You got 
up here. Are those Converse's, bro? Those are. They look like Converse's. They don't have this stuff nice. on them. Nice. Pirates would wear Converse's. Stars. Yeah, they would. Then, Hipsters. look at this. This is. This looks very similar to the asteroid hangar, but this is the inside. This is the cargo module. It looks like. Um, and you have upstairs. You have the railing around the the outside. Um, and somebody's blowing up my Skype. And so, just give me one second. And I will unblow up the Skype and fixed. Um, yeah, so that's very cool. Those aren't in game, just the updated concepts up. These yeah, are, yeah. yeah, these are just updated this is concept, concept art. art. Yeah. Um, that's cool how they have like the TV that drops down in the middle. This is we got a little bench, and this is in the habitat module. Now this is the downstairs because this yeah, isn't tall enough for upstairs two. and a downstairs. Mm -hmm. So or. The, Two floors always. This looks like you have the bunk beds off to the left hand side. You have something over on the right hand side. Looks like medical stuff or something. And then you have like a table and like a picnic table that folds down in the middle. And then we have a ladder. Ooh. That goes up and down. Because that's what ladders do. Please don't raise the price on this ship for hangar. <laughs> for cot for for anything. Do you, do you have I one? I don't have one right now, and I, I want to switch out a ship and um, buy it for when it comes out. I don't think I have an upgrade for one. Otherwise, I would offer it to you. Um, but yeah, so that is hot off the presses right there. That looks good, man. It does. I'm, I just got super excited about it. I awesome. love the, I'm, I'm liking the look, and this is where they're really going to stylize. Mm-hmm. The different uh, Drake from and... how do you feel about it? You're you're the biggest I'm, Drake fan I know. I, so. I'm super excited about it. Uh, I think they're doing a great job with what we've seen ever since they sort of started tackling that. Um, yeah, really, really looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, thank you for the question, UFG man, about the uh, ship. I think, like I said, I think everything should should be coming in and. Variety, as long as it's flyable to humans, then why not? Our next question from Steve J. Thirteen ninety seven. He says, "How much do you think CIG should advertise their events and uh, that they make in the PU? Should they put it on their website, or should it be more subtle, like having NPCs start talking about it in game, in game, or or the in game news screens start showing it on the news, uh, and then the event happen?" Um, I think we're, we'll I think see. All of those. I think all of those on different scales. I think on large scale things, then sure. I think we might even see small scale stuff where you know you might have the some of the guys from the team that run some things, or like you said, that pop a monster in, maybe on a stream somewhere, you know, and they see there's a huge group of people and might just they, be like, they hey, will do. I, I hope they do that. I hope if, they if, do that, and there will if, be no warning. And ben it'll be described like, Enjoy, it as, boys. <laughs> as very Ultima Online, on, like he wanted to do it like Ultima Online, and that's exactly what Ultima Online did. Mm -hmm. When when they saw that there was a group of people together goofing around, they might they would pop a monster in and kill them all, and uh, or like give them a challenge. Yeah, right. Do something cool, and maybe not kill them all. Maybe the GMs put in Ultima Online were very maybe put a derelict <laughs> ship cynical. there that wouldn't normally be there, right? With exactly, some, and, some and maybe there would be some cool it. loot that came off of it, you know, and. Um, that, that's, I, I really think if that's what he has in mind and, and Chris is cool with it and, and that's what the community team ends up doing. That's exactly how, that's exactly how I, how I want it to be. Yeah. Um, this is probably the most, uh, important question. And this one is the only one that's directed to you. And this is from Zoda stream. Well, obviously it's the most important one. Cause it's, it's, uh, it's to you directed so, to me. Yeah. Uh, what color car are you getting? Uh, I don't know because I'll, I'll be getting a used one, but so I might not have as much of a choice. As what I color like. is your car now? Like I want the color of the car that I have now, which is charcoal gray. I love that color. Okay. It's uh, it's not black. It's not white. So it's not like it gets that dirty that easily. But it's also it's light enough because it's in Florida because it gets really hot. Um, so that silvery, like a darker silver color, is is where. Dark silver can basically is this color, but a little darker. Well, wow, that's like heather gray. So yeah, yeah, darker uh, than this, but dark yeah. charcoal gray. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the. Uh, it's actually just gonna be a Benny skin. That's what my car's gonna look like. You could, yeah. I mean, you live in Miami. I'm gonna I'm deliver sure Benny's. I'm sure there's ra like rap companies down there that would do that for you. Yeah, 
Um, Say No More asks, other than the price point, is there any reason to use the Aquila as your explorer over the Carrick? Or is the Carrick simply superior in every way? Well, I really like this question. Uh, there's a couple Do reasons you'll want to use the Aquila before you'll use a Carrick. One of those yeah. is the amount of people that you have. Uh, running a Carrick is going to require a lot more manpower and have a lot more people uh, running it than you have in a Killa. Number two, uh, replacing a Carrick or uh, getting a Carrick up and running is most definitely going to be more expensive than running in a Killa based off of its shared platform with the rest of the constellations. The Carrick is just going to be more expensive overall to probably ensure, to to maintain, and to run. Um I think there's a lot of reasons. It depends on. I think it, it, the biggest one is how many people you plan on on playing with, right? If if it's just you, then maybe both of those ships are too big. If it's a group of three to four people, then maybe the the Aquila makes sense. If you're looking at five or six plus, then maybe the the Carrick makes the most sense at that point. And that's yeah, sort of where and, I'm coming from for that. And Glar in the chat makes a good point too, is that we don't we don't know um, mm -hmm. anything about the jump point sizes and what's really going to fit through any of them at the moment. But the Aquila is much a bit smaller, smaller. Much than, smaller than the Carrick. Yeah, much smaller than the Carrick. So it'll likely be able to fit through um, some smaller jump points, which makes your routes to certain places a bit quicker, perhaps. Yeah, and so. same with the Freelancer Dur as well, right? Which is yeah. also an exploration. Freelancer, I think, is the one. It's the largest small ship. Yeah, I believe. Now, or now, me personally, quantum, personally, I you know, own an Aquila, um, and that was the first multi crew ship that I bought was an Aquila, and I, I, I didn't have an exploration ship, and I didn't have a multi crew ship, and I really wanted uh, both, so I kind of mm. killed two burns with, with uh, one stone, but. Looking bird at killer confirmed. Bird killer. I kill birds. Yeah, kill birds. Guys, but exclamation the, um, point confirmed. Bird killer in chat. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Peta. But the the I actually ended up buying on the most recent uh, anniversary sale was an upgrade from an Aquila to a Carrick because for me personally, I I didn't see the point of owning a, an Aquila over a Carrick if I wanted to if I really wanted to go hardcore. Um, hardcore exploration which uh is something that i do want to show mm -hmm. um the carrick is is the top end of the exploration ships that we know of at the moment um again again there's a little bit with the endeavor that's kind of i think a little bit different from the carrick uh it's like more on a research side of things but i think if you're if you're going to do exploring the carrick is the highest end and and the achilles maybe the next step down no yeah. Um, but saying no more, thank you for the question, and I hope that helps you in your decision making in yeah. the future. Uh, our next question is from NC Pokey. How much attention? NC Pokey. Yep. How much attention do you think CIG is putting into solo gameplay? I am part of an organization, but as a parent with a fairly busy work schedule, not sure how much I will be able to coordinate with others. I'm hoping it will be fun to just drop in for 45 minutes and feel like I'm accomplishing something. Now, what, do you, I, what do you think? Okay, so I have a couple sort of answers to this. First answer that comes straight to my head is Squadron 42. Yeah. That's sort of what the solo play is made for. Second one is, yeah, you can do solo play in Star Citizen. I don't know. It, it just really depends on what is meaningful to you. I don't think you're going to have any of... A lot of the things I think are going to take a lot of teamwork and a lot of effort to do things uh, substantial and significant. Um, but that doesn't, it's so hard to say right now because we solo play now and do things mm -hmm. in 45 minutes, you know, we do a couple missions. Yeah. I mean, you could, do I wonder how much UEC we get like for those missions. You know, that's really what it comes down to is, is when they, we don't know what they're doing and how mm -hmm. much attention they're putting into it. Cause they can't until there's this alpha UEC in game. Once yeah, so they put we the get alpha that UEC in game and everything in. Yeah. Then they'll start balancing the amount of time it takes for you to get a certain amount of UEC and how much things cost and so on and so forth. And I think once Alpha UEC comes in, which we hope we're going to get in 2.4, then you'll start seeing how much work they're putting in. I know for me personally, the game is 1,000 times percent more fun when playing with friends than yes. playing without. Yep. And, and I know Soros agrees. I harass you guys to try and play with me all the time, even if it's for Vandal Swarm or, or whatever, yeah. and that's it's why. Just, it's, it's just so much more fun. I, and, and, 
yeah. unique things happen. It's great, you know? I but enjoy that way more. I think that's going to be part of the balance of the PU is um, solo play versus playing with others and, and doing maybe tougher missions versus uh, not so tough missions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how much those... The, they have to figure out the amount of time each mission takes versus the risk and how much they're going to give you. It's going to be a lot of balance. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, and, and eventually I think they'll get it. So I think they're going to put a lot of attention into it. I just yeah. don't think they're able to yet. Yeah, I don't I think, think, I, think they need, I think they need to add the mechanics in first and then yeah. work on that as that goes. And those um, are literally coming in the next patch. For, so. for Star Citizen itself, there, uh, there's just so much for them to do still, and it's still so, it, in all honesty, it's so far out still. Yeah, that it's it's hard to speculate on things like that right now. Mm -hmm. um, but let's hope that it has a more engaging experience than say Elite or or uh, Eve or something like that for a single player. Yeah, and I think it will. Um, our next question is from Steady Drifting, and he says, "Do you think with the introduction of interdic interdictions, we will see some of the hacking tech or gameplay being introduced from say the Vanguard Sentinel or the Herald to other ships?" I don't huh. think so. I don't think in the first implementations. I don't think so. No, and I don't think they're going to be necessarily related. I mean, no. you could hack someone's, maybe potentially hack someone's drive from not, you know, break that thing specifically mm -hmm. down. But I don't think we that, still need to learn a lot on. They don't. They need to make that design doc for the hacking and everything. So yeah, we don't know much about. And they it haven't yet. really talked about it a lot for even us to even speculate about. It, so it's kind of hard for us to say. Yeah what makes sense and what doesn't the, like um, we can sit here and speculate for another 15 minutes on this if, if you guys can. want but i really i think source and i both really want to make sure that when we do talk about things um and then we do answer questions that we're as informed as possible um but i mean the question is do you think so we can speculate a little bit i think he's kind of asking us um, to speculate maybe I think eventually you'll be, I, I hope anyways, that you'll be able to shut down certain systems. Um, yeah. Whether you're going to be able to sh shut down, maybe if you had, this is, I think a better way to hack it with interdiction would be to send out a scout, right? If you're in a group, that's what scouts are for. Send mm -hmm. out a scout that's capable of getting away. And so it shows up, it's interdicted, say, by gravity field or whatever. We don't know what that's going to be yet. But yep. let's say it's a gravity well that brings them in. You send out some sort of scout ship, whether it be an M50 or something fast, that is hard to hit, right? Because if you don't get hit, you can get out. Yep. So you, you send in that ship, you take away their focus from getting anybody else, you lure them away, or you let your other people know, hey, don't go this way. There's somebody here waiting to interdict you. And then yep. get out of there. And that's the role of a scout ship. Um, actually, now that I think about it, I'm now more excited for scout ships and M50s and stuff like that. You you but just made me kind of excited. And, and that's... Th that's uh, what those are. That's what that is going to be for. And that's what a scout ship's role is. Right there. So, yeah. I, I think that would be more effective and better than trying to hack it from a distance or whatever yeah um but yeah thank you for the question steady drifting i very much appreciate it and our last question here is from akira 11 and this goes to both of us and is a very right. specific question do you play with a joystick or mouse if you play with a joystick are you playing just uh, are you playing sticking to it at the cost of losing competitive edge over the mouse games when the fully games fully released Okay, so this is a good question because me and you both use different setups. Yes. So, and this is like the, I mean, it's the perfect question for me because, yeah. um, I use a joystick. I don't use a throttle, which I think I'm I'm losing some advantage by not using a throttle, and I'm kind of just waiting to see how joysticks progress over time. I knew that the game would uh, take a while to come out, so I'm patient about mm -hmm. using my joystick. I currently use. Uh, Thrustmaster T sixteen thousand M, which are relatively cheap and and uh, but it's Pretty a good very quality. good joystick. Yeah. yeah, good quality. It's a good joystick, um, and I absolutely am sticking to it at the cost of losing what I think is a competitive edge over mouse uh, when the games. I don't know what, what, if it'll be when the games fully released, but at the moment, I am absolutely sticking to it, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm probably losing out on a competitive edge because I think it's more fun and it's the way I want to play the game. 
and it's what I enjoy. Yeah. And and again, we discussed this earlier on in the stream, uh, in, in the podcast that I I don't care about the leaderboards. Yeah, I play video games to get immersed in them, and and to sort of be taken know, in by the lore and yeah, and the story and, and, and exactly. the game itself. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not out there to uh, be the best and and uh, rub it in everyone's faces at how good I am at, at games. So um, I really like the way using a joystick feels, and and that's. That's how I feel. Yeah. So now, what's really good is both of us are while we get along and everything, we're complete opposites on a lot of things. So, on like almost everything. On almost yeah. everything. So for me, I'm very competitive. Um, I that's what I enjoy the most. I don't really care for the story. I don't really care. Uh, the immersive is is nice, but um, as long as it's pretty and I if there if I can be good at it, I will do the best I can to become the best I can. And for me, that's what drives me forward. And and that's how I'm able to play this game over and over and over again is even now is by making myself better and, and giving myself those goals. And those are my own internal goals that I use to to push myself. Um, so for me, not really being into the lore, being into the story stuff, it's cool that it's there. I still appreciate it, but I, I don't think uh, I'm into it as much as Twerk. Um, yeah. That being said, I am a mouse and keyboard user, um, and I'm probably going to stay that way uh, for... It comes down to, like, yeah. I what you're comfortable started with. with a joystick, you started with the mouse, we mm -hmm. got comfortable with them, and it's it's really hard to switch. Yeah, and I too. mean... That's another thing, it's really hard to switch. Like, how many hours would you say you have into this game right now? Oh, like, 2,000? Easy. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, maybe? I have no idea. I mean, like, what's two years, six days a week, <laughs> right. four hours a day? Let's, yeah. You know, I, I probably have, like, 4,000, 5,000 plus. Yeah. So it's like, this is what I'm used to. This is what I know. It's, it's my muscle memory now. Like, when I'm flying, I'm not thinking of, oh, what do I do to roll? Or, oh, what do I do to do this? Or, what do I do to do this? I just do it. Yeah. Right? And it's the same thing if you're used to a uh, uh, controller or if you're used to a joystick or whatever. That's just what your muscle memories are, are going to be. That's, yeah, how it's going to be for you. But that is the end of our questions. And uh, that brings us up to the end of the podcast for today. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who came by, and it worked out to be a perfect two hours, like every time. Twerk yeah. always, Twerk always says, "Oh, this will be a short one. We don't have very much to talk about." Yeah. Every time, it, I don't know how we do it because I don't have a timer up, but we always like like yeah, ninety percent of the time, the time we end at three o'clock or ten after three, like every time. Because my my like little bottom bar on Windows where the time is, mine hides. It's, it's hidden. Mine, auto hides. I, mine hides, so I don't see what time it is. The only time I uh, check is right now. So well, I guess it's in chat, but I never notice. Um, Twerk, what are you up to this week? And um, what's I coming guess, up? Uh, since I've been so sick, uh, I haven't focused on too much. I guess I'm just going to be playing some Star System Friday. Maybe Elite. Uh, I don't think it's fair to... Because uh, Friday we watch uh, Around the Verse and then play. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll play Elite uh, just on Mondays or something. I don't know. But for the moment... I'm just waiting, man. Waiting for 2.4. Getting excited. Uh, getting hyped for that. Uh, as far as giveaways goes, I know that uh, the because of the price hike from on the Starfare that we said we were going to give a Starfare away when it came out, but I'm not going to um, to do that because it was too expensive. So we're going to kind of split it up into a couple different ships. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what they're going to be yet. Right. So we're definitely doing a giveaway this weekend. I just don't know what I'm going to be doing. Gotcha. And I'll do this for you. Twerk shirt. I Yeah. Those those Go I buy one. Shirts. I bought one. The, I bought it yeah. in gray. The same color yeah. as his car. Yeah. Cuz gray ad. Yep. It's Ahi Nation, bro. Be part Ahi of the Ahi Nation. Nation. It should have said yeah. Ahi Nation Ape in niche. like electric 80s font. <laughs> yeah. Ahi Nation. I just threw it through the picture up there. I thought that'd be good enough. Yeah, I know. That's good. I'm excited but for yeah. it. I'm excited for it to arrive in yeah. the mail. Um, yeah, so... For so seven days left, about eight days yeah, left on that. Got a week. Got a week on that. Yeah. Go Make sure check we pick them up, boys. Uh, feel free to throw a link in chat, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's do that. Some people know where to go and buy that because we're forcing you and this is all pay to win. <laughs> um, yeah, so for myself, uh, there's a couple things that are happening. 
So tomorrow, today's Wednesday, right? So mm -hmm. tomorrow's Thursday. So fake uniform of uh, Twitch. He's another uh, partnered Twitch streamer. He lives just outside of Vancouver. He's coming in uh, tomorrow, I think, at noon or at 1 o'clock, like literally just as I start. And he's going to be here for the weekend. Um, and we're going to do some dual streams and hang out. And he's one of the guys that's going to be doing the stream house with me. So we're going to be, Sick. Uh, you know, just doing some research and stuff on our free time when we're not doing the stream. Friday, um, I'm not going to have a stream during the day. I may have one at night. I'm not sure. Uh, well, actually, let's reel it back to Thursday. So Thursday night, we're doing Squadron 604 meetup at EXP. Um, so if you are into Star Citizen or you just want to come hang out and have some drinks or whatever and you're in the Vancouver area, uh, that's at expbar.ca. Um, if I can type that here, uh, EXP bar right there. Um, you can go check that out and see where that is. Uh, if you want to come out, we're more than happy to have people come out. I always buy a couple of pictures for everybody, have a couple of drinks and get some nachos in us and talk about Star Citizen and gaming and just make friends and get away from our computers, which is always nice. Friday, we have a bunch of partnered streamers and I'm going to start doing Field Trip Fridays. I think we're going to do it like a monthly thing. And Field Trip Friday hype. This is where we're going. I don't know if we're gonna. I'm gonna be able to stream it to the Twitch channel. Um, we're gonna periscope it and do all that other fun stuff. I'm charging up my phone and my extra batteries and everything right now. Um, but we're gonna go to the aquarium. We're gonna go check out uh, the science world. We're gonna go check out Capilano Suspension Bridge. We'll do escape rooms. We're that's the kind of stuff we want to do. We're gonna go out for drinks and lunch and dinner and stuff. Are you well, doing all that on Friday? Not all of it. We're going to do... So, I think It depends on what the weather's like, right? So if it's nice, yeah. then maybe we'll go to Capilano Suspension Bridge. If it's uh, not so nice, maybe we'll go inside to mm -hmm. the science world or we'll go to the aquarium or go down to the beach or, or whatever. Whatever. And it's going to be a bunch of us that are going to be able to go out, have a good time, collaborate out in public, and just do, like, cool shit because we're cool people. Um, so... Yeah. People on the internet are cool people. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, for me, anyways, that's what I want to start doing, and <laughs> and it, it just sort of ties into more of doing. No, that it kind sounds of stuff. super fun. So yeah, talking to people. I, I, there's, I think, three of us or four of us so far that are are going for sure, and then I think I'm trying to get some more people. Uh, I know Sniffle Wizard. That. Sniffle Wizard's really close to me. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple other people. And yeah, I you should start, do some stuff. I want to start like getting that. together with some of the guys every now and then too. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Like just like we do the Squadron Six Hundred Four thing. That's yeah, sort just of, go out for some beers. That's been a good thing for that. And then the other thing with the other streamers, like just networking with them and working and sharing ideas yep. and stuff, I think is really cool. So we're mm -hmm. gonna we're going to do that. Um, so that's gonna be good. So Friday I won't be streaming during the day, uh, but at nighttime we will be and. Yeah, other than that, uh, still raising money for the VR setup, um, and we'll be doing some giveaways for that. I know someone uh, donated a Starfarer with LTI, um, and then I'll probably be doing another ship as well on top of that. But yeah, I think um, that's pretty much it for this episode of Redacted. After this, I am going to be jumping into some creative stuff. I told Roxzilla um, that the least I could do for him was make his emotes so if you enjoy watching me make emotes feel free to stick around i'll show you some elite photoshop skills yo and i'll be back online in about five minutes so stick around and hold on to your butts thanks to everybody who came out and we will see you next week on Bye, redacted guys.